I'm Roger Wakefield. I'm a plumber that is growing on YouTube and LinkedIn in social media. Now, that's probably not what you would expect here today, but we're going to talk about the biases maybe some people in the trades have. Maybe it's their biases in their head, or maybe it's biases in your head. You're going to want to stay for this episode to see what it's all about. Stand by, because you're going to enjoy the show. Congratulations. You are tuned into Dolph Barron's Leadership and Loyalty Show, the number one podcast for Fortune 500 executives and those who are dedicated to creating a quantum leap in leadership. Your host, Dolph Barron, he's an executive mentor to leaders like you, a contributing writer for Entrepreneur Magazine, CEO World, and he's been featured on CNN, Fox, CBS, and many other notable sites. Dolph Barron is an international business speaker who was named by Inc. Magazine as one of the top 100 leadership speakers to hire. Now, over to Dolph Barron. Welcome, dear friends, fans, and fellow aficionados of Leadership Excellence. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Leadership and Loyalty Tips for Executives. Let me ask you, what do you need to do to up-level your leadership? Consider this. In 2020, we all got thrown into a turbulent ocean. Some of us actually drowned. I mean, business-wise, some people actually drowned. Most will cling to the familiar and hope that they won't get drowned. Others will swim away from the <laughs> from what's going on in denial, and others will swim away from that denial and accept that they've got to do something different. Now, these are the people who are not just desperate, but they are resilient. They are agile. They're agile enough uh, to not believe what everybody says they can't do. The question is, are you? Are you agile enough to move fast and forward, to get agility, to do something else in, space, in the space where everything else that's familiar seems to have gone out of the window? Well, stay tuned, because that's what you're going to discover today. I'm your host, Dolph Barron the Dragonist, and I'm here to assist you tapping into the one thing in your business that changes everything by transforming meaning into action. To find out more, you can simply go to dovebaron.com. That's D-O-V-B-A-R-O-N.com. This episode of Leadership and Loyalty is brought to you in part by our, two, uh, by our two-hour live trainings that are now part of the Patreon group. So if you go over to the Patreon um, site and you look for the Dragon's Lair, you'll find us right there. Imagine being in a virtual classroom where I personally walk you through the techniques and strategies that I previously only offered to the top CEOs, C-suite executives, high-level entrepreneurs, athletes, and entrepreneurs. Well, now you have that opportunity. If you go to dovebaron.com on the menu, click on the Dragon's Lair button. And when you do that, you can join us. In fact, you'll even be able to get access to past episodes, including Ethical Persuasion, Becoming a Meaning-Driven Leader, Resilient Leadership in a Time of Chaos, and way more. Again, dovebaron.com. Go over there, click on that button at the top, and, you'll, and I'll see you in the next training. Also remember that you can chat about this episode or any past episodes inside of our Facebook and LinkedIn groups. Just look for the Leadership and Loyalty podcast. If you're a new listener, new viewer, thank you for joining us. Strap yourself in. We're about to go full Monty. As always, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever it is that you tune into podcasts. And if you're a regular listener, big thank you to you for making us the number one podcast globally for Fortune 500 listeners with a potential reach of 2.5 to 4 million listeners for every single show over time. We're honored and grateful to be cited by Inc.com as the number one podcast to make you a better leader. All right, let's strip it down and dive right in. In today's show, we're going to go yeah, a little off the rails from the usual. I want to introduce you to someone I believe you can learn a lot from, because this guy does not look the part of what you have as your bias around what leadership or leaders look like. Now, now you say, well, I don't have a bias. Of course you do. Human beings all have bias. And it's examining those biases and breaking through those biases that actually help us. See, so when we meet someone from a very different background or different industry, um, we're like, you know, we might go, oh, well, they're not for me. Well, in business, have you found yourself, and this is a really interesting question, have you found yourself getting frustrated by doing business with experts who seem to be fluent in gobbledygook? Particularly, let's look at the world of marketing. I mean, that seems to be like a language all to itself. 
And maybe you're thinking, oh, I could never learn that. I could never take that on. I'm too old or whatever it is. It's not my area. Well, that's not the truth. That's a bias. Let's find out how. You see, our guest on this episode is Roger Wakefield. And after almost, a, almost losing his business, with the help of marketing companies, Roger Wakefield found out how to make his phone ring through social media. You see, he'd used marketing companies in hopes of making the phone ring. And what they were doing was being really good at making sure the phone didn't ring. So today, Roger has the fastest growing YouTube channel about plumbing. Now you go, well, what has that got to do with me as a leader? Well, he's the biggest plumbing influencer on LinkedIn. You know where you do business? Roger is teaching other businesses, other business owners, how to use the power of social media. Now, normally we would not have anybody on the show who's doing the social media thing, but I think there's a great deal for you to learn here as a leader and particularly from somebody who you would think, well, this doesn't match with that. And that is where you've got to go. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and help me to welcome Mr. Roger Wakefield. Uh, now that's a great introduction. <laughs> Good to have you here, mate. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. I've been looking forward to this. This is something I've really been excited about. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, you know, we talk about social media and one of the things that we, the first question we always like to start with is in this world of social media where everybody's an influencer and everybody's, you know, a coach and every, every man, as I say, every man and his dog's a, a coach and every woman and a cat are a coach okay. um, and everybody's an influencer, because whatever the heck that means. So the question I like to ask my guest as the first question is, who is somebody who has had major influence on you? Who is somebody who has really impacted the quality of your leadership. And it may very well be somebody we've never heard of. It might be a social media person, but it could have easily been somebody we've never heard of at all. You know, a name that's completely unfamiliar. Who would that be? It's, there's actually two. It, mm -hmm. And I, I was ready for this because I, I, I love coaching. I love learning. But to be influenced, I actually hired Michael Gerber and learned from him. But, but the thing is, what I learned was what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm, look, I'm a high school graduate. Um, I don't have a, a great education. I went to learn the trades. But Michael Gerber, the small business guru, taught me what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. but, but Dove, I mean, he would tell me, write a white paper. And I'm like, okay, wait, what is a white paper? <laughs> okay. So, and oh, I'm, for those it, of you who don't understand, let me <laughs> translate. That was a white paper. Y yes, exactly. And, Not and our friend Roger here is speaking about <laughs> Michael Gerber, who wrote the e -myth. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I just want you to know, Roger, usually people have to uh, translate for me because of my accent. <laughs> so between the two of us, I think we need somebody from China or India or somewhere who can translate for the two of us into uh, American English. <laughs> the, the, there's not a Texas dictionary. I wish I could help people out no, there. No, there's not one from where I'm from either, don't worry. So, Sorry, I, I didn't mean no, to interrupt you. No, I love that. I, th I, th I think that's great. The, the thing is, is he would tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. I needed somebody to show me how to do it. Right. And, and I, that's what I love about listening to you. But the second person that, and you laughed at me last time, I'm married to an etiquette and protocol consultant. And I'm a plumber. So that's a joke in itself. And, and I get yeah, it. I mean, like right there, there's an hour of stand up. Yes. Oh, oh God. Yeah, we could go all night. <laughs> the funny thing is, though, she taught me about networking, about mm. emotional intelligence, mm. about communicating with people. And remember, this is from a tradesperson with a high school diploma. But I had to learn how to walk into a room full of C-suite executives right. and network and communicate and not just be the dumbest guy in the room. And to learn that and to be able to look at her and learn from her and watch her how she did and look at Michael Gerber and learn the things from how businesses are ran, what people are doing and mm. what the people are that are doing it right. And then take all that and put it together those are the two people that literally I have probably been most influenced by 
in my, my business career. So let's just, I just want to go into these because like I said, we're going to go a little off the rails from where we usually go on these shows. So when it comes to Michael Gerber, you know, the E-Myth guy, he wrote that book. It was a massive book. He re-released it, upgraded it, et cetera. And it, and it was a great book when it came out without a shadow of a doubt. But, you know, I, I wonder whether generally speaking, and again, it's all generalizations are lies, but generally speaking, whether plumbers or people in, in the trades business would look at a Michael Gerber. You know what I mean? So uh, we actually had a guy on here recently. I'm sorry, I, I've got blanked for a moment, but he started a roofing business and he was on here and we talked about actually that he, his entire business was a leadership business in the roofing trade. And, you know, and it was unusual because of that. And so this is where I come to with this is, is I, I'm not sure that an average plumber would go and say, Oh, I should read the E-Myth. What was the pull? Why, why did you go down that road? Am I sensing biases here? Exactly. That's the whole point, right? No, no, I love that. You're, you're right. Yeah. I was literally at another event, uh, a five plus one book teaching you the five things you need to do to grow your business. And there was a gentleman there that, that I respected and I asked him, said, what book have you read that literally changed the way you did business? Uh -huh. And he, he said, E-Myth. Right. And, you know, I didn't buy it. I didn't rush out and get it. I mean, I did nothing at all like that. I was there to learn about five plus one. And I learned that, worked on it. And then a few months later, I was heading out of town and I remembered that book. So mm. I downloaded it. And I went, I was headed to Austin. Uh, and I say I downloaded it. I was in the car. I, I hit download. It says, this book's over so big. So you have to have a Wi-Fi connection be plugged in. I drive to Austin. I go to dinner that night. I come back to the hotel room. And when I got back to the hotel room, it had already downloaded. So I literally just laid there and listened to the first chapter. Mm. As soon as the chapter was over, I called my wife and said, we're doing business different. Mm -hmm. We are going to change the way we think and the way we look at it. I was trying to grow a plumbing company. I never thought about growing a plumbing company to scale, to build, right. to be bigger. I, I was a technician at, the at that point in time, Dove, I was building me a job. And that's the key that I really want people to get because <clears throat> when I talked about that bias and we, you know, and I, I spoke about this on several of the shows that, you know, we've been going out at 7 PM and applauding the frontline workers. And I said, you know, the frontline workers you're forgetting are actually people in the trades and they are the garbage collectors. They are, they are the truck drivers and they are the plumbers who, you know, we were talking about this before we went on air, who were going into people's houses and, you know, people who got sick because of it. Um, and that, you know, there's this, this, all these biases and we don't see these people. I, oftentimes we don't see them as entrepreneurs, but most of the truck drivers I know are actually entrepreneurs. They work for themselves. Most of the, you know, plumbers uh, are not working in companies they are entrepreneurs. And so it was interesting for me that you took that idea of scaling a trade and you moved into the mindset of being an entrepreneur, because I think that when, as you said, most people, when they move into the entrepreneurial space, are just saying, I'm sick of the boss. I want to be my own boss. And so what they do is they get a business card and buy themselves a job at less money per hour. So they don't have to deal with a boss. I mean, the truth of the matter is if you're in business, you're going to work for less money an hour, at least for the first few years. Right. So, you know, I find that really interesting that you, you said, we're going to do diff business differently. Think about it like this. How many doctors and attorneys do you know that have their own business? They, they have a job. Exactly. It does not matter what their business is, unless they've got a lot of attorneys or doctors working under them, they're going to have to be in the office every day. They're going to have it. to be in the office to make money. If you're not at work that day, you're not making money mm -hmm. because you've built yourself a great job. I wanted to build the opportunity to number one, help other plumbers, mm -hmm. help my, my community by providing a good service because just like any business, there's people out there doing a disservice in our industry. I know that surprises you, but you know, all plumbers aren't honest. All electricians aren't, all roofers aren't. 
Some well, hold on, out. but all lawyers aren't. Oh, and yeah, well, well, I wasn't going to go there. I wasn't going to go We're going to go into bias. Let's collapse the whole thing. <laughs> uh, absolutely. You know, attorneys and sharks, right? They're about exactly. the same level. So, you know, my thought was, I want to create a better product. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you train your plumbers more. You educate your consumers more. You show them what you're doing. There's nothing to hide. You become transparent. And you show them, this is why we do what we do. And I tell people, look, we're not the cheapest plumber in town. I hire the best people. I use the best product. We have the best training. I cannot do all that and be the cheapest plumber in town. If you want the cheapest plumber in town, I'll give you their number. But it's going to cost you more when you call us back to fix what they do. It is what it is. I, and I, you know, and again, I think that that's a really important thing. Um, and that's the point of distinction um, in everything. Um, and I've talked about this with many entrepreneurs uh, it, it, in courses and trainings that I've run is if you're competing on price, you're already out of business because somebody will come along who can always undercut you. And if it isn't the guy down the street, it's the big box version of whatever your industry is, who can say, listen, we can afford to lose a dollar on every deal because we're picking up a thousand deals, whereas you can't. So it's, it's, it's absolutely the point is to become the best and to provide that at whatever level, whether you're a plumber or a lawyer or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. But what I want to come to is, is back to, you know, when you talked last time, um, your wife and, and etiquette and she's teaching you about networking because again, I don't know, I mean, obviously, uh, I don't know that most people think about plumbers as networkers. Um, I think that they think of uh, realtors as, as networkers. They might think of accountants or even, you know, or bookkeepers or those kinds of white collar things as networkers. Uh, and they think of if you're going to network in the plumbing world, it's down the pub with your mates and they're going to tell their mates, oh, you should get Roger to fix your pipes. So talk to us about learning that entrepreneurial skill inside of, inside of the trades. And again, before you answer that, I just want to say to everybody, this is a lesson for you in understanding how your bias is in the way. So I'm not even asking you to think about Roger. I'm not even asking you to think about plumbing. I'm asking you to think about where is my bias stopping me from going, I can't do that because I'm this or that. Right, so I just want to say that to everybody before we go any further, and I want to give you the chance to, to answer that, please. No, no uh, and I love the way that you asked it and worded it the way you did because I had my own biases. Of course. I walked in thinking, look, plumbers don't do this. Mm -hmm. This will not work. And I even told my wife, now remember, she's an etiquette and protocol consultant. She goes networking often, but our phones were not blowing up. Right. She kept, she kept telling me, Roger, look, my phones don't blow up because – Etiquette and protocol is something people think they don't need every day. Well, they really do. Mm -hmm. But plumbing, they understand they do need every day. Yes. And, and plumbing problems, when they happen, you need somebody immediately. Yeah, it's a 911 situation. Absolutely. Nobody so has a 911 etiquette situation. <laughs> well, you know, they may, but they don't realize that. There's no way to get the kit, but he can't unblock that pipe. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't go back and repeat that mistake. No. The funny thing is, though, so she talked me into going. We walked in, and when we walked in, Dave, I told her, you go your way. I'm going to go mine. I don't want us to just hang out together. We already know each other. You do your deal. I'll do mine. We left about two and a half hours later, and we walk outside, and it was at a, a bar, restaurant-type place. And we walked outside and walked around the corner, and she just looked over at me, and she says, every time I looked up, people were talking to you. You had a crowd around you. You're, you're, you're waving your hands in the air. You're talking to five or six people the entire night. What were you doing? And it's like, well, Julie, oh, my shirt says plumbing. People would come up and look at me and say, oh, you're a plumber. I've got a problem at home. I've got a toilet that does this. I've got a water heater that does this. They'd want to tell me about their problems or their stories. And, you know, I talked to you before about branding. I always brand everywhere I go. I believe branding is marketing, not advertising, marketing. Yes. I'm getting my brand out there. And there's meaning behind it. 
There's meaning behind my logo. There's meaning behind that I'm a lead AP. There's meaning behind green, part of our name. And to me, everything I do has meaning, has a purpose. And for me, walking in that night and walking away and realizing, look, I'm not marketing, I'm not selling, I'm talking to people. Mm -hmm. These are people that find out what I do and they want to tell other people about me. What a better way to build a business than just talk to people about what you do, let them hear your passion, let them hear your beliefs, let them hear your meaning behind what you do and see the passion that you have for it. People will fall in love with you and people buy from people they know, love, trust, and they're connected with. Yeah. So let, let, let's go to this for a minute because you've become this plumbing guru. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be insulting, but this plumbing guru on, on YouTube. Yes, sir. Right. And you know, like I said, you had the fastest growing um, authority uh, uh, channel on YouTube for the plumbing. Uh, you've, I see you on LinkedIn doing your thing as well. Um, so that seems like a big uh, jump from unblocking the toilet, right? Um, and, you know, uh, I think the world has opened up, you know, because of uh, DIY TV, you know, we see these shows of, you know, houses that are fixer uppers and we're seeing builders who become, you know, mega stars because of, you know, because of even, you know, those skills. But you were a plumber first. Um, then you get the e-myth. You get into this understanding, five plus one. You get into the e-myth. You start understanding entrepreneurial. Then you end up in the social media world. And, and I'm going to be, throw the bias out there. A I, social I, I media like world. Coming when you are a Texan with a handlebar, you know, with a, a, a biker mustache, you know, you look like you might smash somebody in the head with a beer. Uh, uh, you know, you look like the guy, the, the good old boy from the bar, you're a plumber and you're certainly not 20. The, every bias is in your, you know, is in your opposition and you go into the world of social media and become a freaking superstar. Talk to us, not just about that, but about that pivot, because that's the key I want our listeners, our viewers to get, is I want them to get that pivot, that understanding, because I think that there's so much self-bias. So, but you're, you're this personification of the bias, and, I, and that's why I want to have you on the show, because you're the personification of the bias. So we can easily look at you and go, oh, well, he's not like me. But we do that to ourselves. We go, well, I'm not like them. And so I can't do that. And you could have easily said, well, I'm not a 19 year old millennial. I, I, you know, I can't say white paper. So everybody understands it. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I don't look like them. I'm not from the same background as them. I didn't go to college and study social media. You know, everything is off about that. And I know that people are running those biases about themselves. So talk to us about that, that agility, that pivot. Cause I think that's the big lesson for everybody here in leadership. It, it really, and you've, you've addressed it. We were getting robbed by marketing companies. We paid companies so much money to literally make our phone stop ringing. And I mean, it was so bad that we were picking up our cell phones, calling the office number like you did back in high school. You know, you, you'd like call somebody and say, hey, call me back because my girlfriend hadn't called and I just want to know if my phone's broken. Is my ringer broken? Whatever it is. And we were picking up our cell phones, calling the office to see if the phone was working. So we had gone to a conference before for, for tradespeople. Mm -hmm. and every session that we walked into about marketing, somebody was trying to sell you something, their service, their product, their, their app that you have to have to run your business the right way. Mm -hmm. and, and we bought into that so many times and we were coming up on one of those conferences again. And, and I talked to my wife and thank God she's a lot smarter than me. And I said, look, I'm tired of learning marketing from people that are selling me marketing tools. I want to learn social media. And I don't know why, but I, I thought this would be different. Any marketing company I had talked to about social media, and I remember this is just two and a half years ago. So social so media. So we're talking is, 2017. 
Uh, yeah, 28, 2018, March of 2018. 2018. Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. So I walk in, I, I told her, I said, look, I, I don't want to learn marketing from marketing people. I want to learn social media from social media people. Mm -hmm. And I went to a conference out in San Diego. And I love the, the way you say pivot because it happened in an instant. Mm -hmm. I showed up. I'm an early riser. Uh, I'm on the West Coast, so I'm a really early riser. And I walk into this conference, the doors are open an hour early, and I walked up to the counter. I said, hey, look, I'm here. Can I go ahead and register? Never been here before. So she takes my name, she looks at it, she registers me, she hands me my lanyard, and she says, okay, Roger, I'm going to find some plumbers for you to hang out with. And she scrolls through her list. There's nobody here, like, there's no plumbers here. Who else would you hang out with? I said, roofers, electricians, HVAC techs, landscapers, painters, you know, any Trade residential people. trades people. And she scrolls through her list. And Dove, when she looked at me, she had tears in her eyes. And she says, Roger, there's nobody here like you. Wow. And she, uh, and when I say tears in her eyes, you could see them. She's like, I feel sorry for you. And she looks at me and, and she says, I don't know who you're going to hang out with. And in that moment, my life changed because going through my mind immediately is there's nobody here like me. Why not? Mm -hmm. But I looked at her and I smiled from ear to ear. I said, don't you worry about me. I'm going to be good. And I walked away and I, I have not even looked through the book yet. I don't know what sessions I'm going to. I know nothing about it, but I walked away and thought, look at the opportunity that just landed in my lap. Look at the opportunity that I just stepped in right here, right now. And I knew at that moment I had an opportunity to change not just my life, but maybe change lives for other plumbers, other tradespeople. And, and that's literally how fast it happened that split second. It's fascinating. There's an old story of, a, uh, uh, of two competing American shoe companies who send a salesman to a small place in Africa. And when they get there, they're from separate companies and they arrive at, you know, pretty much the same time, but they neither of them know the other ones in town. And one of them phones back to the office and said, get me on the next plane out of here. And they said, why? I said, well, these people don't even wear shoes. So we're not going to do any business. Meanwhile, the other guy calls his company and he says, send me everything you've got. These people don't have any shoes. And it's interesting because that story flashed in my mind as you said that. Many, I think that many people would have said, oh shit, I'm in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Many tradespeople, I'm in the wrong place. And it's interesting that you saw it as an opportunity. So that, that brings me to the question, why? Why did you, do you know why you recognize that as a, golden opportunity as opposed to, Oh God, I'm in the wrong place. I, I really, and I think I do. And you know, you hurt my feelings a while ago. You said that I'm not 20. Now, how do you know that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Neither am I, <laughs> but, if that, if, but if we're 20, we both had very rough lives. Oh boy, and that's the truth. It's been a rough 20 years. <laughs> little, little hardware. Where... <laughs> I, here, here's what had done it for me is, and you mentioned it a while ago. I was on a treadmill working out one morning and I was watching a video on, on YouTube or a, a podcast and a guy holds up his phone. He says, I don't care if you're 20, you're 50 or 70, you can do this. Right. And I mean, I stopped in my tracks. I mean, I, I learned, I stepped off the treadmill, I grabbed hold of it. I backed it up and watched him say it again. And as soon as he said it, I thought, I know I can do this. Well, two weeks later, three weeks later, I'm at that conference. Right. Okay. So here's what, remember, marketing companies have been ripping me off up till this point. Mm -hmm. I knew social media is coming. Everybody's talking about it. You see people advertising on it. You see all kinds of things on it. It's coming. Mm -hmm. And when I walked into this conference and remember, I know it's coming and I realized there's nobody here like me, man, look at the opportunity. And I think about this in, in my business every day as an entrepreneur. What opportunities do we have 
that, that are coming and knocking on our door that maybe we don't see, maybe right. we're afraid of, maybe we don't see the meaning behind it or how we can incorporate it into the jobs, the careers, the, the businesses that we have. But I changed my life right then and I knew it as soon as it happened. Yeah. I, I, again, I think that the, one of the great lessons for anyone in leadership, and by that, you could be a, a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, whatever it is, you could be a leader of your family. But one of the great challenges we have is our biases, the biases we have about all kinds of things um, that stop us from seeing something that is directly in front of us because it doesn't look the way we think it should look. You know, you said something before, which I wanted to correct you in mid-sentence and I wanted to correct you, but I didn't. And because I, I know it's not true. You know, uh, you said something about being dumb. And I know that you're not, that's not true. I also know that you have an I, I, high IQ. Um, and, and that's not my opinion. I know that that's actually been measured. You have a high IQ. And again, that bias is, here's a guy in the trades, probably couldn't get into university, probably didn't, doesn't have an I, I, high IQ, has a biker mustache, probably doesn't have an high IQ, is in the plumbing business. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of this absolute crap all the time. And I, again, it's not just what we do to others, it's what we do to ourselves. So I'm really, I, like I said, what I'm really interested in is how you got over your own bias. Because, you know, you, you had said to me in a previous conversation that you were probably most likely to end, end up in jail, right? Um, but you became a businessman, you became an entrepreneur, you, even it was in the trades, you still were a businessman. A and what was the biases that were in your way that stopped you for so long? Because you said, you know, you've, you've made this pivot in the last few years. Again, not 20. So what, what was the biases that were keeping you from making that shift 10 years ago or 15 or 20 years ago for that matter? I think that I had it in my mind. And, and you know, last time we talked, I told you that when, when I get on stage and start talking, I tell everybody, okay, look, y'all remember, I'm just a plumber. And I think that that was so embedded in me. And, and I still use it sometimes today. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I do. A lot of times I'll say, look, I, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. But I think that that's my way. You know, I've got a deal on, I think it's my Facebook page or used to be that says, underestimate me. That'll be fun. And I love that I, line, by I, the way. I, I, but, but I use that to my advantage. I, I understand that people look at me as a plumber. And I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. because that's the way I see it. You've already underestimated me. So I've already won this. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't mean it cocky. I don't mean it nope. bad. I just, I am very proud of the fact that I learned in life and it was I, like, I was just a, and I'm going to call it a normal plumber. I was a plumber that wasn't trying to get any extra endorsements, any extra licenses, any extra education. I'm a plumber. I've got my license game over. Mm -hmm. My life is set. I know what to do. Somewhere along the way, I learned, man, if I will get these other endorsements, I bring more value to the companies that I work for. If I learn to do this, I bring more value. And if you bring more value to your employer, you make more money. Mm -hmm. And I was always one of the highest paid plumbers at every company that I worked at. But it was because of the value that I brought. Right. And I think that later when I decided that I wanted to open my own company, that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to have that e-myth. Mm -hmm. I knew that the only way you do that and do that right is you bring more value to people. I train my plumbers. We do leadership training every Monday. We do safety training every Wednesday. We do sales training, communication training every Friday. My wife teaches the Fridays. Amber, my call center rep, is an amazing leader, and she teaches that on Monday, and I sat through that course. Wednesdays, I talk safety, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays, we just talk to the guys about the jobs they had. And we spend 30 minutes to an hour in there every day training our people because I learned training yourself can move you so far ahead of everybody else in the field you're in. 
so if you're right now if you know you're aware that c-suite leaders are listening to this what what's your message to them it's a, it's a very simple one what can you do to make your customers lives better and we, we always look at ourselves what can i do to make my company better what can i do to make my techs better what can i do to make my vans look better or me look better mm -hmm. anything at all but at the end of the day if i can bring value to the people's lives that we touch which to me as a plumbing company owner is our end user to me as a social media person is the person watching the video what can i do to bring value to their life because if everything we do is about bringing more value to our customers, they're gonna remember that, they're gonna see it, they're gonna feel it. They're gonna understand what our, what our message is. What is it we're trying to do? And, and we don't, you know, I was in church one day and, and one of the people was speaking and he said, I want you to walk out of the building and tell the first 10 people you meet about Jesus never say a word and it's like wow what if we can walk into customers houses and show them how professional we are show them how much we care show them that we do things right without ever having to tell them about it they see we're protecting their house they see we're protecting their cabinet we're not laying tools on it what are we doing that they can walk by and just say wow we put booties on when we walk in people so many people tell us you don't have to do that. Yes, ma'am, we do, because we want to protect your house. And they're like, wow, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a great example, um, that willingness to not just add value, because I, th I, think, I think that a lot of leaders think that they are focused on that, even though they may not be. But for me, you know, the test is in what you were just saying there. The test is... Um, I have a very good friend who is a very devout Christian. I am not. Um, we are very good friends. It doesn't get in the way. Absolutely. Uh, right. And one of the things he said was, you know, um, he said, Christians really get on my nerves. This is his words, not mine. And I said, why? He goes, because there's too much of this yeah. and not enough doing. And, 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 he, and he said, you know, the, he says, I actually only go to church occasionally, certain churches that I pick. And he goes, and he goes, because I get annoyed when I'm in there. And I said, oh, that's interesting. Why? Tell me. And he said, because same thing. He goes, they, they're all preaching, but they're not doing. And he said, I want to live in the way of Jesus. And he goes, and that's how I try to live. And he goes, and that is, if there is any evangelism in me, it's my action. And we were talking about that in the context of business. Like, how are you evangelizing your business by what you do, not by what you say, which is, you know, so you become the evangelist for an industry, you know, which is what I see you as. I see you as an industry evangelist um, because you are showing people, not just talking about it. And I want to move into that realm of the conversation, if I may, mm -hmm. um, which is, this plumbing evangelism that you're doing via YouTube and now via LinkedIn, because in case people don't know, and I know many people don't, um, I've been around doing what I do for 30 odd years. I remember when uh, web 2.0 was coming in. That's what we call social media, right? It, and it was referred to as web 2.0, um, where there was going to be things that were more than just basic code on there and you could actually have movies and video and it was like, wow, you know, and it was about, I think it was, was it 12 years ago that YouTube came about? Um, it's not that long ago, whatever it is, it's pretty new. Um, and many people became through advertising YouTube millionaires by walking you through their day as they took a crap, brushed their teeth and had lunch. I mean, it was really not much except it was reality TV via some kid in Texas, you know, a kid in Minnesota or whatever it would be. That world is gone. Many of those internet, those YouTube millionaires have disappeared. YouTube has become, was 
consumed by Google became about algorithms. It became very uh, strict and hard to advertise on. And now, you know, YouTube are throwing people off for having opinions that other people don't like, etc. And I will often say just in fairness, you know, if you don't like it, that's okay. You don't have to like it. It's not your business. They're letting you on there. That's their platform. You know, I don't necessarily agree with their decision, but it doesn't matter. It's their platform. However, bringing this to that next level of here, what I was saying is you've managed to rise to the, to the top in something that is no longer the new cool thing. It's a world now that is hyper competitive and in many ways commoditized. Is the reason you've become so big, do you think it's because it's plumbing? Because I know there's all kinds of DIY guys on there, you know, and there are builder people doing different things. And some of it's pretty cool stuff. Why do you think that you've become so big and that you've become this number one authority as the, so, you know, as the plumbing authority on there? I think it's because it's not just plumbing that we're talking about. It's how to become a good person, how to become the best plumber you can be. And it's, it's great Dove, because I get people coming all the time says, Oh my God, I'm an electrician. And, and everything you say, I could take out the word plumber and put an electrician. Mm. And if, if I'm trying to teach people that the things that I've learned from, from Michael, from Julie, from you, from, from Chaz at five plus one, if I'm trying to teach people, look, if you want to grow your business and you know, the entrepreneurs that are watching say, yeah, but that never worked for my business. I'll tell you, there's nothing sexy or exciting about plumbing. And when you get up there and you talk about what you do, why you do it, how you do it, I think that people really see, wow, you know what, that there's more to it than just plumbing. It's the person behind it. It's, mm -hmm. it's the heart. It's the, the, the passion, the meaning. Uh, you know, in Texas, we were fighting for our plumbing license for a while. And, and I mean, we still are. But, you know, I never realized there were that many politics involved with a professional license. I learned a lot in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. But I really think that college people, a lot of people are going to college for a degree that they're never going to use. Mm -hmm. I have people get into my videos, get into my lives, ask questions and comments. Look, my parents want me to go to college, but I don't want to. I want to be a plumber. How do I have that discussion with them? Right. And I, I truthfully think that, that what I'm doing, and it doesn't matter if it's a C-suite executive or a kid in high school, because I get both, mm. that watch my video and say, wow, you know what? I'm never going to do plumbing. I would never repair anything plumbing myself. But I watch your videos because what you talk about is real in everybody's life. And, and, and I really think that that's got a lot to do with it. I want to help people. And plumbing is just my vehicle to get there. Right. And so this is, again, back to why I think it was important to have you on. Is because, as you know, and certainly as you know, if you're tuning in, if you've been listening to my shows regularly, you know, everything I do is around, around finding the meaning right? And turning meaning into action. And that's finding your dragon fire. What is it that does that for you? And the meaning is, is the single monolithic difference between average and magnificent. And everybody I know uh, I've met and in 30 odd years of doing this, who is outstandingly successful in whatever they do are driven by something more than the thing. They understand the thing is I, and you just use the word and I use it all the time. The thing is the vehicle. It's not what's being transported in the vehicle. It's merely the truck. The truck says on the side, Texas green plumbing, but what's in the vehicle is something else. It's that meaning. So you're using plumbing as a vehicle. So tell us, what are you evangelizing? Is it blue collar work that can be fulfilling and, and you can have a, a rich, fulfilling life in it? Are you evangelizing that? Are you evangelizing something else? 
I, I think I think to me it's it's that people can learn their way up. And and Ju, Julie and I talked about this a while back because, and, and I got a message in here one day, and I'm a very emotions guy. I feel, man, I, I feel about everything that I do, and I think that's that's what leads to my passion. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, look, I think anybody can learn their way up. And I get messages from, you know, young females that are like, look, I, I'm in high school and I don't want to go to college. I want to be a plumber because, because I want to do this or because of this or because of this. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, look, you can do because because they're like, I want to, but nobody will let me. Who? Tell me who can stop you from being what you want to be. Because mm -hmm. if you think that, if that's what you've already got in your mind, if that's the bias that you have, somebody told you you couldn't, so you can't, they've already won. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you this, you can do it if you want to. You just have to decide to try. I think that an education, and, and, and it breaks my heart because I see you know, people in South Dallas, South Central LA say, look, this is where I was born. I can never get out of this. Number one, you already realize you're there and you say you can't get out, so you're thinking there may be a reason to. Mm -hmm. Trades are an easy thing to get into. Look, I was a high school graduate. I got into the trades. You can get into the trades right now. You don't even have to be a high school graduate in a lot of places. But you can learn your way up out of that $300 a month apartment into a mansion. Mm -hmm. And I say that because... I know so many tradespeople that have gone on to own their own business and become millionaires. And you know what? There, there's no college degree required. You can I, do I think whatever you, you, you want to do. What you said there is important. You can learn your way up. Um, and, you know, certainly at, at a lifestyle level, you can, you can do that. Um, but it's, it's interesting because I, I taught a training a couple of weeks ago on creativity. It was called Creativity Unleashed for Leaders. And, uh, and I talked about how societally um, the artists of our lives, the artists of our world have been shamed for the work they do. And the artists are actually the ones who change the world. They make us think differently. They make us look at things in a different perspective. And artists come in the form of writers and they come in the form of painters and they come in the form of sculptors and they come in a million different forms including innovation and and i talked about the the misconceptions of artistry um and i think that in a particularly in a post-industrial age world we've done the same with the trades and it's really wonderful for me to see that people are beginning to realize that they're going to university and coming away with a quarter of a million dollars plus in debt for a job they'll never do and realizing that their mate that they went to school with who was just as bright as them, but didn't have that desire is now working in the trades has been four years in the trades, doesn't have 250 grand in debt and has just put a deposit down on his first house, you know, and it's like, or her first house. So, the, I mean, there's so much bias around blue collar trade working. And, you know, I'm from a working class background, I understand. Uh, there's a bunch of bias around that. And there's also a gender bias, right? And, you know, and you mentioned that just now. That's why I wanted to bring it up, which is, you know, girls don't do that. Is there... Is that something you talk about on the on your show? Is like you know breaking down those biases, but in the context of education, in the context of uh, social status, and even in the context of gender bias? Absolutely. The, the, right now, three of the top plumbers in Texas, the executive director for the Texas State Board, her name is Lisa Hill. One of the f and she's not anymore, but the chief plumbing inspector in Dallas. Diane Villarreal, and an instructor at the union here in Dallas, the, the director of training, Debbie Vukovic. And these are three women that when I talk to, I'm like, man, you, you've got this better than I do. Right. Meaning they, they study plumbing even better than me. And mm -hmm. man, I'm one that, look, I study this every day. Right. And 
I don't study it so much. I can't quote code. I can't tell you every single step. No. I'm studying new technique, new methodology, new tools, things like that, because I want to see what's happening in the future. Remember when I walked into the social media event, my marketing to that point had been what's been working for companies from 2000 to 2018. What I learned there in three days is what's going to be working from 2018 to 2048. Mm -hmm. And like you said, YouTube's not that old. It's the beginning. And if I can talk to a girl in Florida who's thinking about becoming an electrician and saw my video and think, wait, he said girls can do the trades. She may have the most amazing electrical company. She may design the, the new power grid for the world to say, look, we can all be solar if we tie it all together and we all do this because she saw my video and said, mm -hmm. hey, girls can do this. And I think I'm an evangelist for getting people into the trades. It gives them an opportunity. And, and I look at you because I, I do use some of your verbiage. I, I, I watch what you do. I listen to what you teach. Thank you. And, but, but, but I mean, think about this. If I hired you as a coach for one year, would my leadership level increase? Okay. Hiring the right people, you can learn your way up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just learning something at school. Sometimes when you get to a certain level, it's hiring the right coaches, the yes. right consultants, whatever it is. But we all have that opportunity. And that's why I got stuck on that phrase with Julie, learn your way up. We can all do it. And but that's, that, but that's, that's again the bias, Roger. That's why I want to keep, it, keep coming back to this. Because, <laughs> because people hold the bias on themselves. I can't do that. Uh, and they'll even say, yeah, but it's different for me, right? I don't know what that means, but, you know, it's their own bias. And so, you know, people will say to me, my God, you know, you're, you're, you're a lot of money for what, you know, what you charge for a year. And I'm like, no, nope, I'm really cheap. And they go, no, no, that's a lot of money. And I go, yep, it is. I had a conversation with a guy on Monday who had booked a 45-minute training with me, private training. And he came on. And he's like, yeah, I'm pretty nervous. And I said, well, he goes, this is the most I've ever spent for 45 minutes. It's 1500 bucks. So I'm not, you know, I'll be transparent about it. And, and he said, I've never spent that kind of money and I said, for 45 minutes. He goes, but I know you're really good and you can help me. He goes, but I got to tell you, I'm nervous because I can't really afford that. And I said, okay, we're 20 minutes in. And he goes, oh my God, I've already got my money, <laughs> right? At the end, he's like, you have just transformed my brand, my message, my story, everything I'm going to do. He goes, he goes, I, I, I can't wait. I said, I, I, you know, we're, it's not quite 45 minutes. He goes, I'm okay with going right now because I want to tell my wife how much value I got. Yes. And this is the problem is that we have, and particularly when we come from that working class blue collar mentality, I came from it. I understand. So I'm not judging anybody. We have this mentality is I can't afford it. And my answer to that is always simple. If you can't afford it, you need it mm -hmm. because that's the clue. Now you do have to do your due diligence and you do have to make sure the person's right for you, but you got to invest in you first. Now you invested in you first with going to social media event. You were invested in yourself with going to, to take Michael's training and other trainings. Talk to us just, I want to just get into this because before I finish, which is investing in this idea of starting a YouTube channel, because that's, again, it's another leap. It's another way forward that do you, you know, sort of my, you know, we talked about the meaning of it and the impact you've had and that's great. But first of all, you know, uh, was there that idea that mm, I don't know if this will work. And second of all, does it, does doing that actually grow Texas Green Plumbing, your company? Because I want well, I, leaders to understand maybe they should do it or maybe they shouldn't. I, I, I love that you started with, you know, maybe this doesn't work because I've got that on a piece of paper, printed off the computer, didn't buy anything fancy, not hanging in front of my treadmill. So I see it every morning. Most people ask themselves, what if this won't work? 
I ask myself, what if this does work? Okay. So investing in yourself, I literally did not think YouTube was going to be what it is for me. Mm -hmm. I literally thought I'm going to make some videos. I'm going to find out because everybody kept telling, telling me you cannot use social media for local growth. Now, when, when I teach people about social media, it's social local growth, how to grow right where you're at. Mm -hmm. Now I started out with a webcam. I started out with the, the microphone on the computer with, with the lights in the office. We started growing after we realized, look, what we're doing is working. People are watching, people are commenting, people are coming back. Subscribers are growing rapidly, whatever the case is. But what we had to realize is if the more we invest in us, the better we get. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you said, $1,500 is a lot of money. We started looking at the money coming in from YouTube, which at the time wasn't a lot, but it would add up. And it's like, hey, now we've got enough for a new camera. Mm -hmm. Now we have enough for a mixer board. Now we have enough for this. And I was speaking at an event and I was sitting with a guy that I really wanted to talk to. And the lady who said, look, I, I'll, I'll set y'all down at dinner, but I want to sit between y'all because I want to listen to this conversation. And she's huge on social media. I mean, millions of followers. But I was talking to this guy and I told him, I said, look, I'm getting phone calls from New York about being on TV and doing a TV show. And, and he just, he automatically just started shaking his head no. And I looked at him, I said, well, why are you shaking your head no? He says, Roger, I have friends that have their own TV shows. They make two, $300,000 a year. I'm like, dude, I'm a plumber. That's good money. <laughs> it's decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. For, for a plumber, it's real good. And, and he looks at me and he just starts laughing. He says, Roger, you're going to make two or, th or, or he said, you're going to make three or $400,000 a month on your YouTube channel. And I just started laughing. I said, oh my God, you're crazy. It's just my little channel is about plumbing. And he laughs and he looks around the room. He says, you have no idea how many people in this room make a million dollars a month mm -hmm. on YouTube. And it blew my mind because that's not what I saw coming in. No. And you, you ask if it's what it's done for Texas green plumbing. And, and this is what I tell any business owner out there, anyone, and, and not even a business owner. If you're high enough in a business that you have control over the things you're doing, we make videos to teach people about plumbing, about the things we're good at, why we do what we do, how we do what we do, what our message is. And literally, and this happened just a couple of months ago, I'll go to walk outside, I'm headed somewhere, and Amber, my CCR, says, you realize we got three slab leak jobs off YouTube today. And, and I looked at her, I said, wait, what do you mean today? She said, well, we started them today. She said, but all three of these jobs came in last week. Mm -hmm. Every time they called, they said, hey, we saw your video on slab leaks and leak detection on YouTube. We know what you're talking about. Mm. Will you come to our house and do a sewer water test? If you can let people know what you're good at without trying to sell it to them, if they can understand, Dov, you're the greatest leadership speaker on earth, I don't care what it costs. Mm -hmm. Just you're what I have to have. Mm -hmm. and, and it's funny because, like I told you earlier, we're not the cheapest plumbing company around. People don't call and ask how much is it. They call and no. say, hey, we want you. Right. Are you worth it? Absolutely. Mm. So Roger, we're, we're very close to the end of our time together and I really enjoyed this conversation. I really thank you for, for being willing to, to come on and, and share what you've shared from, like I said, from what I believe is a, a, a quite a different perspective. So there are two things I want to do. Um, before we finish and one is of course to have you tell people where they can find out about you your resources your youtube channel and all the other ways to connect with you and also i always like to have my guests leave us with a practical piece of advice something that our leaders can go away and say okay i can do that in the next 24 hours preferably next closer than that but what would be the piece of direction you would give them uh, not about unblocking their sink obviously but as a leader first of all uh, i'm easy to get in touch with it's roger wakefield on youtube linkedin wherever you can find me but the one piece of advice and this is the 
information that we give our plumbers. And this is what I tell everybody. Number one, you have the power to implement whatever you want to do. It's up to you. If you want to start a leadership course, start learning for yourself. If you want to start social media, start doing it yourself. You have that power to implement. But the other thing right along with that is, look, it's okay to fail because you're going to learn from that. If you never start, it's never going to work. You have that power to start and it's okay to fail. So look, you're going to learn and you're going to grow. To me, those are the biggest things on earth right there. Fabulous. Thank you. So to, again, tell everybody where they can find out about you, what's your website, your, your uh, YouTube channel, et cetera, all the different ways that people can get a hold of you. Uh, on YouTube or LinkedIn, either one, it's Roger Wakefield. I connect with you. Uh, look, I think I put out good information to help all people. And it's like I said, it's, it's not just plumbing problems. It's life. And to me, that's valuable information. You can go to rogerwakefield.com. We are rebuilding that right now because of TV shows and opportunities coming up. But right now it'll take you to the YouTube. We're having fun. Life is so fun. if they go to YouTube. Uh, <laughs> so if they go to rogerwakefield.com, that will automatically move them to your channel on YouTube. And right now, you have yes. how many videos on there? Uh, we I think we're over 400 videos now. We're, we're close to... Uh, we're close to 60,000 subscribers. Uh, just yesterday, we, we looked at numbers. Our videos right now are being watched 70,000 hours a month. Wow. And just so everybody understands, how long is approximately, usually, how long is your videos? We try to stay or no longer than 10 minutes. We may hit 12 or something every now and then. And what percentage of that is people watching right through? Uh, probably 40%. We maintain for 100% of the video. So I just want everybody to understand that because I do understand social media and I do understand those things. Not like Roger does, but um, first of all, to have that number of hours of watch time, there is really good content because you have to remember YouTube is a plethora of distraction, right? Anything you're watching, there's someone else popping up all over the place. And for people to stay on for that many hours is insane. And to be 80% of, 40% uh, uh, of the time people are actually watching through to the end is crazy, right? I mean, it's usually two or 3% for those of you who don't know. So obviously this man's content is really good. And obviously people are not just watching it to work out how to clean their pipes. And that's a metaphor, but we won't go to that one. <laughs> anyway, uh, listen, Roger, it's been a pleasure and honor, sir. I hope you'll stay with us at the end. Thank you so much for all that you've shared with us. Again, remember, you can check out Roger at www.rogerwakefield.com, which will also take you through to his YouTube channel. Um, you can find him on LinkedIn. He does a, a show on there as well. And you can find him on Facebook and all kinds of great places. And you can also hang out with other conscious leaders and chat about this episode or any other past episode inside of our Facebook and LinkedIn groups. Just look for the Leadership and Loyalty podcast. And it doesn't matter how successful you are. If your employees and your customers don't understand what gives your company meaning, they're only working at a fraction of your capacity. To find out how you can hire me, Dal Varon, as a speaker or leadership strategist for you or for your organization, simply go to dovebaron.com. Because unified meaning, or as we call it, finding a dragon fire, is the one single monolithic difference between mediocrity and greatness in both individuals and companies. I want to thank you for sharing the show with everybody you know. Till next time, stay curious, my friends. Stay curious about the bias that is holding you back from your own growth and from what you see around you. The world is in day, indeed your oyster, but it's only your oyster if you get outside of your shell. I'm Dov Barron. I'm here to assist you tapping into your dragon fire to reach that next level of clarity, focus, purpose, and profit in your business, your life, and your leadership impact. And I am out.